The concept of one is just that. It's a concept. There's no such thing as one thing in existence. It's a perspective and a way of categorizing things in our minds. I challenge you, name something that's one thing and one thing only. Let's start with your body. Is that one thing? It can be if you take a particular perspective, but it's also many things. Organs, bones, cells, there's so many different levels of things within this notion of one thing. Your body is made up of many cells, so the cells must be a better example of being one thing and one thing only, right? No, not necessarily. Again, we can take a particular perspective and say that it's one thing, but really, there's a nucleus, cell membrane, mitochondria. A cell certainly is not only one thing from other perspectives. Let's not forget that we live in a universe based on relativity and perspective. Is it one thing, or is it many things? Well, that's relative to the perspective you're taking. So let's quit playing games and let's just get right down to it. Everything is made of atoms, right? So one atom is a good example of something that's only one thing, right? Of course not. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles like protons, electrons, and croutons. So again, atoms are both one thing and many things. So let's take one of these protons. This is the smallest component building block of the universe, right? This is finally an example of the smallest base particle, an example of one thing that is also not many other things, right? Well, what's a proton made of? Quarks and bosons, are you kidding me? Does this just keep going infinitely? Yes, yes it does, you're getting it now. This is exactly how reality is created and structured. Wherever there is an observer observing, there is an observer creating reality there. Reality might seem like you're walking around with cameras on your head and you're taking in observations and recording what you're seeing and hearing, but you've also got a mini projector on your head and everywhere you look, oh wow, there's stuff to perceive there. This is the paradox. This is what it means to be entangled with the thing that you're trying to measure. What happens when someone looks at the edge of outer space or the edge of our limits and observing tiny things? What happens when you look where no one has looked before? Well, you're already wearing a projector on your forehead that is taking beliefs and expectations from your unconscious. It's processing them in a way that will reconcile with either your old or a new worldview belief system. Then your unconscious mind and that forehead projector that it controls will project the experience for you to perceive. What everyone calls physical reality is our unconscious mind objectified. Your mind creates the experience of physical matter for you in reality using the same methods it uses to create the experience of physical matter for you in your dreams. How it does this is not what's important. Recognizing that your mind is obviously already capable of doing this is what's important. This recognition is what waking up is in its purest form. You become lucid in this dream that your mind is creating for you. And since dreams or creations of the mind are all that there is, as far as we're concerned, this is reality. When you dream, your mind creates an alternate universe, it places your conscious awareness inside of its own creation, and then it disconnects you from the fact that you created it. Your subconscious mind creates an earth for you to walk on, your mind creates a brain and a body with five senses, and it creates other people for you to talk to and interact with as if they're somehow separate from you. Your own mind already does this automatically, without your permission, and without any advance warning. Your conscious mind is along for the ride. It's surfing on an ocean of your unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is the one thing that connects us all to each other and the experience of physical reality that we're taking part in right now. Your expectations and beliefs are strong determining factors in what it is you'll see as reality. Not directly, indirectly. Your beliefs form your paradigm or worldview or belief system. Again, in this context, I'm using these words interchangeably. This, of course, creates expectations and beliefs about how things will go. But it also creates two things that need to reconcile. 
Anything that doesn't allow consciousness or an infinite field of possibilities to be the groundless substrate this is all taking place in, any model that doesn't include this is going to have limitations that are not an accurate reflection of reality. It's almost as if infinite reality goes out of its way to break any finite molds that we try to put it in. How very human-like. These are patterns deep within consciousness, which is reflected in your behavior as well as the universe's. What people call laws of the universe are more accurately patterns or habituations within consciousness. Yes, the speed of light appears to be such and such from our perspective right now, but everything is relative, and everything is moving and changing. This is a habit. It's a tendency of the universe, not a fixed law. The universe is consciousness. The universe is intelligence objectified. It will continue to evolve as consciousness does, and in the process, habits and tendencies will change just like they do in you. You are the universe. Both you and the universe are created after the same pattern in infinite consciousness. You're just unfolding on a dramatically different time scale. In fact, from your perspective, the universe is evolving and changing its rules so slowly, you may not be able to perceive its changes in your lifetime or even the lifetime of recorded human history. But when you observe the same patterns in a small child, and you watch old habits, old tendencies, and things you thought were permanent fall away, and you watch new habits and rules being formed, and things you thought were impossible start happening, now the resemblance starts to become noticeable. Matter behaves differently depending on whether or not someone is watching it. In fact, it may not even become matter unless someone is watching it. All of our latest scientific discoveries in quantum mechanics point to the fact that before matter becomes matter, it can be an infinite energetic wave of possibilities until an observer observes that blank screen of that infinite field with the projector on their head which then collapses the infinite wave function and creates the appearance of an actual finite physical particle of matter based on the presence of an observer. We have a hundred years worth of double slit experiments demonstrating this. The current model of reality formed by scientific consensus has profound limitations because it still doesn't explain or allow for this. Even after a hundred years, they haven't been able to reconcile this without reconstructing their entire model, which they don't want to do because they have to rethink everything that they think is true. The current scientific worldview can't explain this or allow for it because the scientific worldview does not include consciousness in its models of what's driving the behavior of our universe. Science is looking for answers to how the universe behaves and it's looking everywhere except within consciousness. Because everyone knows consciousness came after matter and is not the primary driving force behind the universe. Wait, what? Can you see the assumptions and the blind spots yet? See, I'm, I'm reminded of a quote. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. But in the experts, there are few. Says Suzuki, who authored a really good book on Zen Beginner's Mind. But anyways, many scientists still believe that they can construct an accurate model of the universe without including consciousness. Talk about barking up the wrong tree. Yes, they'll find plenty of answers there, enough to keep them busy and convinced that they're on the right track. They'll find plenty of helpful patterns and connect plenty of dots. But that system and methodology can't intentionally discover answers to the bigger, more important questions about how the universe behaves. Not by using a model for nature that assumes that a self-organizing, unintelligent, material universe was here first, and then somehow created consciousness and intelligence later. They'll use assumptions and say that matter was here first, and that created everything that we know but they won't use assumptions and say consciousness was here first, and that's what created everything we know. And even though they don't know what energy is, they'll insist that it's definitely not consciousness, because that would collapse their entire worldview belief system in on itself, so we can't have that. They'll say they don't believe it's consciousness because there's not enough evidence for it. 
but they'll go ahead and believe that it's non-conscious matter or non-conscious energy because they've convinced themselves that there is enough evidence to make that leap and believe that, even though there's obviously not. There is no way, no possible conceivable way to prove that matter was here before consciousness or vice versa. This is not possible. You would have to be not conscious to do this experiment. It takes belief, assumption, and faith to form an entire model of reality based on either perspective. The worldview that the current scientific consensus put together for us assumes matter was here first and then later came consciousness. But what if the truth is that these two are entangled with each other in paradoxical fashion? Could science discover this truth? What if consciousness is primary and was here first and creates matter by collapsing an infinite field of conscious energy into particles like the double slit experiment demonstrates? Could the current scientific methodology discover that truth with its, with its current assumptions? I, only by accident, which seems to be one of the main ways science makes big leaps of progress. The biggest scientific discoveries in history have been made either by accident or by a non-expert exploring a field he's new to with a fresh and open mind, and by exploring ideas that the established experts in the field have already assumed are wrong. This is where the big progress comes from in science, thinking outside the box. And it's very hard to do this after spending the first half of your life being indoctrinated and placed into a box. This is why out-of-the-box thinkers are so hard to find. It's a trait that gets mostly erased in our indoctrination process. You're not allowed to graduate school unless you've memorized and regurgitated volumes of information which may or may not even be true. Those who spend their time and energy questioning the information and looking for better answers will find it's much harder to make grades and graduate from school. These ideas I'm sharing are nothing new. The world's most brilliant scientists have been trying to tell the other scientists about these ideas for many generations now. But it's not a truth that can be communicated with words or symbols. When our most brilliant scientists try to communicate this truth, we hear things like, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot get behind consciousness. End quote says Max Planck, a Nobel Prize winning physicist who used this understanding to lay the foundation for quantum theory. And then the other scientists hear it and they don't get it because they can't get it while they're holding on to their previous assumptions and their pre-existing beliefs. They would have to let go of everything they thought was true in order to get it. And this kind of paradigm shifting truth is not the kind of thing that can be communicated with words and symbols. And if it were, all of these scientists would have to change their entire worldview and perhaps take some time off of work to rethink their lives and everything they thought was true. These kinds of realizations are shocking and tend to rock people to the core. Most people are not ready to have their concept of what reality is shattered, which is what's required for the worldview and consciousness to evolve. So they'll carry on using their old model for how nature behaves, which for some backwards reason doesn't include consciousness or intelligence in it. When someone is heavily cemented in their worldview, they're not even capable of recognizing their assumptions as assumptions. To them, their assumptions look like obvious facts. Dogma only looks like dogma to an outside observer with a different belief system. Well, Obviously, you need to have a physical brain before you can have the consciousness that's produced by the physical brain. Can you see the assumption in there? And then they build a model for reality based on this assumption. And of course, the model has major limitations and produces many conclusions that aren't true. Because you can't put assumptions into an equation or into a methodology and expect to get truth out the other end. I, this is pretty basic stuff, but again, when you leave philosophy out of education, it becomes indoctrination. The fundamental structure of reality is based on this infinite pattern of many things being contained within one thing. 
In philosophy circles, some people like to use the word holon to describe something that is one thing, but is also made up of many other things within it. In the example I just gave, your body, your cells, atoms, subatomic particles are all holons. Are you with me so far? Because the fact of the matter is that everything in existence is a holon. This infinite pattern forms the structure of reality, which can end up looking like some really trippy fractals which convey the same concept visually. But spiritual growth guy, didn't you just say that reality is all one interconnected thing and it makes up all things? I'm so confused. Well, yes, this is the paradox. Depending on which perspective you look at it from, it can either look like one thing or many things. This is what it means to be living in a world of relativity. What you perceive is relative to your perspective. Reality, consciousness, God, whatever we're calling it, is one infinite Russian nesting doll fractal with no beginning and no end. Anywhere you look, there's more of it, because your observation of it is creating it. I'm not trying to say this is literally the truth and you should make this part of whatever new belief system your mind is automatically assembling for you. I'm saying if you try to wrap your mind around this perspective I'm sharing, you'll be moving closer to the truth. The actual truth cannot be communicated with words, so this, or anything else that you hear in your life, is not the actual truth. It's the finger pointing the way. You have to look inside and connect your own dots. When they connect and you glimpse the whole all at once, it'll hit you like a ton of bricks and your life will never be the same afterwards.